whole process started, I guess, when we acquired the land in February of 2013. And another engineer from Public Works was working with Preston, uh, Jesse Farrens, he's retired. But uh, he mentioned the park and all, and I had a million one grant from the Department of Natural Resources for Chesapeake Bay cleanup. Oh. You know, and I was working on a myriad of different projects throughout the county and the town of Easton and looked at this as a potential site for water quality enhancement. Yeah. So uh, that's how I got into play, and I had some money. So I was gonna say. you know, once we got the group together and we started meeting on a regular basis, we're kind of you know, as Oxford residents, trying to figure out maybe to fit some things that they don't have within the community. At the same time, making sure that we follow what you know the the conservation fund's premise for that is, meaning past. And it's kind of twofold. You know, there's there's a water feature in the middle. It's a large. Um, you know, it's wetland. A, a wetland creation. It's it's kind of dual purpose. Not only does it give some character to the park, but Bill can explain it. It actually assists Oxford in some of its water. So the the land, the full land itself is 86 acres. We've developed about half of it, so about 42 in this first phase, and then the rest of it's going to be left in agriculture for right now. If we ever decided that we wanted to expand it, maybe make some more nature trails or do more tree plantings that option's there. Right now, it's it's kind of being left as it is for agriculture. Planting. We planted over... 10 acres of trees. Park, and they're all native species, so nothing, you know... Six to eight foot tall. Part of it was the property was originally had been zoned for housing at one point. I think, the, I think the, the community really wanted it to stay natural. They didn't want to necessarily see some of this development. So it worked well for them, and it worked well for us to kind of marry those two things together and come up with a park with, you know, some, you know, almost a mile walking trail, um, some bird watching. Yeah, uh, we're working with the um, Easton High School in a project on pollinators, okay. and it's going to be done in early May. We're planting over a half acre of native plants in eight locations along the trail, and we're working them through the environmental education requirements where we're giving them lectures on significance of pollinators and monarchs. Yeah. It's pretty exciting to involve the young people into the project and give them a sense of ownership. Oh, absolutely. You know, eventually the hope is that this will link with a trail from the town straight to it. So you wouldn't necessarily have to drive to it. There'll be a trail that will go to the walking trail within the park. So residents of Oxford can walk or ride their bike, either one, straight from their house to the park without actually having to get in a car very often. This is kind of this is kind of a once, you know, in a career type thing to actually be able to just come in and take a piece of land and kind of sculpt it to what you want. This isn't, you know, something that comes along every day. And it's, you know, now, yeah, you may get a neighborhood park here and there where you get to decide whether you're going to put a playground or something in, but nothing, you know, nearly as, you know, expansive as this. Everybody. <laughs> and the dog. You in the red sweater. Here we go. Oxford Conservation Park on three. One, two, three. <laughs>